This screencast is on inflation. Um, inflation is the general increase in the price level. And in this screencast, it's going to be a lot of math. So you want to write down some of the different formulas, and you want to practice the problems that are included in here. Because we're going to look at how you um, figure out a price index, how you um, figure out the inflation rate, and then how you can convert prices to other year prices in order to be able to compare sales and um, the amount that people are either making wages or the amount of sales of something that is sold. So when we're looking here at inflation, the way that we determine if there's a general increase in the price level is we look at the consumer price index. The consumer price index is a market basket of the most commonly consumed products. And economists look at those to see if there's a general increase in the price level. When we're figuring out the price index, this formula here is really important. So this is where you're looking at the price um, of the basket year of the year that you're currently in or the year that you're looking at and how that compares to the base year. And you divide those two and multiply it by 100. If we're talking about the base year, your price index will always be 100 because the price of the basket year of the base year divided by the price of the basket year of the base year is 1 times 100 is 100. And so um, any type of inflation will have a CPI that will be greater than 100. So when we look at these problems here, in this market basket, it's a really simplified one. You have hot dogs and hamburgers. And you're not looking at like how much more quantity-wise are you selling from one year to the next. The quantity is always the same. You're always going to have four hot dogs. You're always going to have two hamburgers. What's changing is the price that they're being sold over the years. And so in order to figure out the price of the market basket, you multiply price times quantity of each of the goods that year and add them together. And then that gives you the price of the market basket. So in 2001, it was $8 total, and then you had 14 for 2002 and 20 for 2003. I've carried that um, table over here, so that way these numbers don't go away. So when we're looking here at computing the CPI, remember it's the current price index or that price index of the year divided by the price index of the or the price basket of the base year multiplied by 100. And so the market basket price of 2001 is our base year. And so that's why the denominators for all of them are going to be 8. So then you're looking at the price basket for each of those years and dividing them um, into the 8 times 100, and that gives you the price index for each of the years. So now, when we have these, again, if there's inflation, it's always going to be a number that's going to be over 100 because it will be going up, and the base year has to be at 100. If I'm figuring out the inflation rate, that's where you're taking the new minus the original divided by the original times 100. Um, a simplified step, if you're looking at the inflation rate from 2002 to 2001, since you're comparing it to the base year, you can just subtract the numbers. 175 minus 100 is the 75 percent. But in order to be able to do from 2003 to 2002, you can't subtract. You have to do the new minus the original, which is the one that you're comparing it to, divided by the original times 100. And that gives you the 43 percent. So when you're looking here at the inflation rates, these are extremely large, but um, that is how you compute those. So some of the things that you might be asked on tests or things that you want to think about is how can you adjust the ticket sales, for example, um, that are given here. So we can see here if we're comparing Gone with the Wind prices to Titanic. Gone with the Wind was produced in 1939, and their ticket prices um, were 23 cents per ticket, whereas the ticket prices for um, Titanic were $4.59. And so you had a much different price um, between the two. So if I really want to look to see 
based on the number that are being sold and the prices, how much did these box offices really bring in? For this one here, I need to adjust the prices. And so I'm converting the gone with the win um, ticket prices to the Titanic ones. And so I take the gone with the win price here and I put it uh, put the Titanic price over it because that will then allow the inflation to show what has happened with it. And then I multiply it by the gone with the win price. So again, if I were to compare here and convert, and I chose um, Titanic as the one that we're comparing it to because that was the one that's most recent of them all. But if we were going to do the Star Wars, the Star Wars was from 1977, great movie. Um, you would have here the price level in 1977 would be in the denominator. You're comparing it with the ticket prices of the Titanic, and so that's in the numerator, and you're multiplying it by the ticket prices that you have with um, currently what was going on in 1977. And so there you can see that if you're not going to adjust them, you have a much different version than when you're making it all in the same level, all in the same playing field. Here's another example. This would be to um, convert uh, Babe Ruth's wages in 1931 to dollars in 2001. So if we remember, you're taking the wages of um, the original wages and you're putting that in the denominator. And then the one that you're converting it to are the wages that would be in the numerator. And then you have the salary that they are making, um, and you're having that at um, that year of Babe Ruth. And so you can see that the salary in 1931 was $80,000. But when you look at the price index here of the uh, when he was doing it and versus in 2001, you can see that if you were converted to 2001 prices, he would be making almost a million dollars. Using the CPI isn't the only way, though, that we look at inflation. One of the other things I think that you just need to be aware of, and this formula will get used sometimes, is the GDP uh, deflator. So when you're looking at the difference, we've talked about the CPI. And that's that market basket of what the consumers buy. The GDP deflator is about what's being produced domestically. So again, when you think about GDP, those final goods and services that are produced in a given year. And so instead of it being about what consumers are buying, this is about what's being produced. Because it said that the uh, CPI can be um, a percent above sometimes what the actual inflation rate is. And so the way that you calculate the GDP deflator, which I think is important for you to do, is you take the nominal GDP over the real GDP and you multiply that by 100. And that will give you then this GDP deflator, which will probably be a number that's a little smaller than if you were to take the price basket of the current year divided by the basket Price or the base year of the price basket uh, in order to determine the CPI. So when we're talking about the inflation rate, the inflation rate is not the CPI. The CPI is a price index, and that's that 100 and above number. The inflation rate is that percentage change that you have from one year to the next. So when we're looking here at computing that, it's the new minus the original divided by the original times 100, and that will give you the inflation rate. But one of the other things to think about is the difference between nominal and real interest rate. An interest rate is a loan, right? And so when you have a loan, you have to pay interest, and you have to give extra money in order for somebody to be able to loan out money to you in advance. And so when you're looking at the difference between what the banks are charging you, which is that nominal interest rate, versus what it is adjusted for inflation, you're able to look at um, the difference by subtracting the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate. And so that's where you're able to see that the real interest rate 
is really when you take nominal 15% minus the inflation rate of 10, and that gives you a real interest rate of 5.